This is part 4 of JavaScript with ASP.NET tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to change grid view row background color when a checkbox in that row is checked. Let me explain what I mean. When we select a row by checking the checkbox, we want to change the background color of that row to gray. The rows that we have not selected, we want to set their background color to white. We want to achieve this using JavaScript. We'll be continuing with the same example that we worked with in part 3 of this video series. So please watch part 3 before proceeding. Now let's flip to Visual Studio. This is the same example that we worked with in the previous video session. This JavaScript function that is header checkbox click. This function is called when the click event occurs on the checkbox within the grid view header. When we check the header checkbox, all the checkboxes in the data rows of this grid view are automatically checked. When we uncheck the header checkbox, the checkboxes in the data row are unchecked. So when the rows are selected, we want their background color to be changed to gray. When they are not selected, we want their background color to be white. And we know that when click event occurs on this checkbox, this is the JavaScript function that's called. And look at this, it has got a parameter. This checkbox is the header checkbox. And inside the function, notice that we are looping through all the data rows within the grid view control. If checkbox dot checked. So basically this checkbox is the header checkbox. If that is checked, what does it mean? All the checkboxes in the data rows are also checked. That means all the data rows are selected. At that point we want to change the background color of those selected rows to gray. So if checked property returns true, then we know that the rows are selected. And at that point, we want to change the background color to gray. So style.background equals, we can either specify color name or color code. Let's actually use color code. And to gray, get gray color, we use six letter C's. Else, if the header checkbox is not checked, then we know that all of the data row checkboxes will also be unchecked, meaning the rows are not selected. In that case, we want to set the background color to white. And to get white color, use six letter Fs. All right, so let's save these changes and reload this page. And look at this. When the rows are selected, the background color is changed to gray. When they are not selected, the background color is white. But we do have a problem here. Look at this. When I uncheck or when I deselect a row by unchecking the checkbox, look at that. The background color of that row is not set to white. Why is that? That's basically because when a click event occurs on the checkbox in the data row, we have a separate JavaScript uh, function that's called. And that function is this one, child checkbox click. And notice to this function, we are passing a checkbox object. In this case, the checkbox is the checkbox that is present in the data row. Okay. And inside this function, we have a for loop where we are looping through all the data rows. And look at this, we have an if condition here. If the checked property is equal to false, then that means the checkbox is unchecked, meaning that row is not selected. If the row is not selected, then we want to set the background color of that row to white. So let's include six letter Fs. And let's include else section. And it comes to the else part if the checkbox actually um, is checked. So in that case, we want to set the background color to gray. All right, so let's go ahead and reload the page. And look at this. When I uncheck the first row, it works as expected. But now let's uncheck the second row. And look at that, it doesn't work. Why is that? That's basically because if you look at this function, notice that in this if block, we have a break statement. So when it is looping through each row within the grid view, and then when it finds a row that has the checkbox unchecked, that means checked property is going to return false, 
it sets this variable to true, it sets the background color to white, and then it executes this break statement. So what does that mean? It's going to break the for loop. So any other row that you're going to uncheck, you know, it's, going, it's not going to execute this piece of code for these two rows because it has already found a row which is unchecked and this condition becomes true so it executes these two statements and the break statement will cause that for loop to break and that's the reason why these rows background color is not changed to white so if you want those rows also you know background color also to change to white when we uncheck the checkbox then we have to remove this break keyword so let's go ahead and get rid of that let's save the changes and look at this. When we select all, you know, all the rows, background color is gray. Deselect, background color changed to white. I uncheck the first row, uncheck the second row, uncheck the third row. Now it all works as expected. Look at this. When we check that back, we have the background color changed to gray. And here is that function, che uh, child checkbox click. Let's look at another example. Now what we want to do is when we hover the mouse over a specific row, we want to change the font to bold. And on mouse out, the font should become normal. So when we mouse over, font should become bold. And we want to make the font bold in the entire row. Okay, so on mouse over, the entire text in that entire row should be bolded. On mouse out, it should become normal. Okay. So that means we need to associate our code with on mouse over and on mouse out events. And again, these are client side events. So you can either do it in the HTML or within the code behind file. Let's actually use code behind file. Now we know that this row data bound event of the grid view control will be fired for each and every row within the grid view control. At that point, we can set on mouse over event for the row within the grid view control. So e dot row dot attributes dot add on mouse over this dot so this represents here the row to which we are associating this event. So this dot style dot font weight is equal to bold similarly on mouse out this dot style dot font weight equals normal so let's save those changes reload the page and look at this as we mouse over the font becomes bold and as we mouse out the font becomes normal Thank you for listening and have a great day.